Okay, today's topic is gonna to make you feel like you are flashing back to high school science. And I really wish I would have paid more attention back then, but I didn't see how talking about cells and um, certain scientific words, they didn't spark me back then. I didn't see how they related to my well-being, my functioning, and really, really foolish because we are science, we are biology, and our biology determines our biography. So we are not necessarily doomed by our genetics. There are certain gene expressions um, that we are all born with, but we can control very much our destiny by what we put in our body, the things that we avoid, and how we move our body. So today's topic is mitochondria. Is it ringing a bell? Yes? No? Some of you might know it just as a word, but don't really know how it pertains to your weight loss goals, uh, your fitness goals, your brain health, your anti-aging, but it is wrapped into all of that. So our mitochondria are something that we want to support and we want to create an environment of survival of the fittest. We don't just want subpar functioning mitochondria. We want the weak ones to die off and to give birth to new, strong, healthy, vital mitochondria that are going to help squash inflammation. They're gonna give us tons of energy. They're gonna help use ketones so that our brains are turned on and we can be leaner, we can be stronger, we can be more focused, and we can just overall be more optimally functioning human beings and slow down the aging process. Every day we are bombarded with things that ding our mitochondria from the food we take in to pollutants and toxins and how we move or don't move our body, how we hydrate or don't hydrate, and temperatures that we're exposed to and things like that. So all of those things impact our mitochondria. Our mitochondria can use three sources of energy. So let me back up. Our mitochondria basically take nutrients that we take in, they break them down, unlock them, and then they use them to create energy for our body and hundreds, probably if not thousands of different processes that our body has to do every day. So if we have subpar functioning mitochondria, you can imagine that that relates to poor energy, that relates to poor results, poor recovery in your body, and just um, sort of speeding up the aging process. You don't think of young people as typically having diseases, dementia, um, uh, tremors, anything like that, but we age and we do. And so a normal part of aging, you know, we think of, oh, I don't want to live to probably be 90 to 100 because we think of what that person functions like, you know, or they, they can't wipe their own bottoms. They can't remember their wife's name or something like that. And that is actually not normal aging. Those are things where there's been a breakdown of functioning of mitochondria. And so disease states happen. And so what we want to do is to create optimal wellness within our body. And so the mitochondria can use three sources of fuel. It can use sugar, which mitochondria are like, sweet, sugar is super easy to burn. But the side effect is that is that it burns really dirty. And by dirty, I mean it creates this oxidative stress. And we have oxidative stress, we have tons of inflammation, uh, we speed up our aging, um, we lose elasticity in our skin, we can't produce collagen enough. So burning sugar for the mitochondria is not optimal for our, our entire well-being. So we want to get as much sugar out of our diet as we possibly can. It, uh, mitochondria can also use protein. The problem with that, you, you would think like, oh, hey, protein would be a great source. We need uh, enough protein to obviously help rebuild and restore muscles and tissue and all of that, but excess protein, more than our body needs to do that repair, actually turns into sugar as if it were a carbohydrate source. It's a, it's a process called gluconeogenesis. It's a protein then turning into a glucose and that, um, that burns really, really dirty in our body, causing tons of oxidative stress, inflammation, and it's almost worse than sugar. So we don't want a high, high protein diet that we've seen these bodybuilders have. And you know, the second we start working out, we wanna eat loads of chicken breast, which chicken breast not having any fat or carbohydrates with it, and if you have a ton of protein at once, it actually is working against your fat loss goals, your anti-aging goals, and your feel-good goals. So we don't want to flood our system with a ton of protein. We want a low to moderate protein intake, enough to sustain repair, but not so much that we then cause inflammation and fat storage and things like that in our body. 
So what is the third source that mitochondria can function off of and loves is ketones. And we are able to produce those when there is naturally a deficit in sugar in our body and then there's enough dietary fat for our body to um, thrive on. So we want to work towards having our body function on ketones because not only does it turn on our brain and fuel our workouts and our life, but it is enhancing and strengthening our mitochondria. They love ketones. Um, so those, that's where we want to start working towards is taking out the sugars, taking out the excess protein and beefing up the healthy fats. You can also do a medium chain triglyceride, which is an MCT. And a lot of you are familiar with blended fat coffees nowadays and have heard all that buzz, but there is a particular form of MCT because there's four forms of MCT, but there's a particular form found in a company, um, the Bulletproof company that has their brain octane formula. The reason they created that was because they found that there's higher um, cognitive function with the higher production of ketones, and there's a much higher production of ketones within the body when you have that form of MCT. So I'd encourage you to check that out. I have no affiliation with the company. I don't make a dime off of it, it doesn't matter. Um, this is all for your functioning and well-being. So we wanna create ketones. Another way we can do that is having periods of fasting. So our body likes cycles. Everything evolves, you think about seasons, we think about um, you know, life in our body. Everything is created around cycles. So to maintain one style of eating all the time is actually a detriment to your body. You wanna cycle in. So you wanna maybe cycle into ketosis and then you wanna come out of it. And this is especially important for women for hormonal health, because we have all these cycles and fluctuations, we need to cycle in and cycle out. So we need periods of higher caloric intake, higher fat intake, lower carb intake, and then we need to reintroduce and have a day or two here and there where we have a higher calorie value, we have a higher carbohydrate value to put that back in, have our body continue these cycles. So I'm hoping that makes sense. So there's a couple other ways that we can strengthen our mitochondria. A free way, a way that you're going to want to smack me the first few times that you try it and say, oh, I hate Brianna, why is she making me do this? But it is free and you're going to be doing part of this anyway. So here's what you do to strengthen your mitochondria by telling the weak ones to die off. So when you're taking your shower, you have this wonderful warm shower, you get everything done. And then at the end of it, you want to end your shower with the coldest water that'll possibly come out of that faucet. You want to face that shower, let it hit you in the forehead, let it hit you in the chest. Everything in you, because your mitochondria communicate with your brain, they're going to be screaming, get me out, get me out, because I'm going to die. You're not going to die in your cold shower in your house, I promise you. So, but your mitochondria are freaking out. And so the weak ones get signaled to die off, they can't handle it. So that might be, you can only tolerate 20 seconds, and then your brain's like, I got to get out, I got to get out, self-preservation. So that's day one. You might only be able to hack 20 seconds. So day two, you come back and maybe you can hack 30 seconds and we want to work your way up over the next few days to a minute to two minutes. And that's where you're getting the benefits. You've probably seen these cryotherapy places popping up. That's why um, cryotherapy can tout less inflammation, better energy, um, anti-aging. It's because it is helping those weak mitochondria to kick the bucket so that new guys can come in and start really strengthening and enhancing your body and performance. So that is a free way to start helping you boost mitochondria. Um, there is a way where um, the more that you can avoid inflammatory, unhealthy fats, so your fry food, your soybean oil, your canola oil, all of those inflammatory oils because your mitochondria are encased essentially in these fats and so your body loves healthy fat because the mitochondria are like oh great we can use them in our membrane and help build it and strengthen it but when it has these either artificial fats or inflammatory fats come in the mitochondria are like wait th this isn't what we need to build and be optimal and they don't know what to do with it and it becomes a struggle and a problem and that's when we have inflammation and unhealthy body and things like that so we want to kick those fried foods, those bad oils. We don't want to overheat our oils. So it's really important to know the smoke point of the oils that you're using in your cooking because you don't want to, let's say, I don't know what, it depends on the way olive oil is processed, what its smoke point is, but you don't want to, if it has a smoke point of 350 degrees, be cooking something at 425, you now have made it an inflammatory, carcinogenic, unhealthy fat. So know your smoke points. Um, there are some key supplements that you can take. There is one called NAD. 
And there are NAD boosters that you can take to naturally increase that. And there has been um, mice and human studies about how quickly it can help turn around the health of your mitochondria when you supplement with NAD and NAD boosters. And also resveratrol, the component that comes from red wine. We have heard that and resveratrol has kind of been on the scene, but now there's more and more science to support that resveratrol when taken, can, especially in combination with these NAD boosters, can really, really start to reverse our aging, our biological aging process, and enhance the health of our mitochondria. A couple other things that you can do, instead of overtraining and trying to work out every day and pound yourself into the ground and not get anywhere, you can do things like sprinting twice a week, where you sprint, 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 and then you actually try to lay flat and have your body recover. And then you sprint, sprint, sprint really hard, and you lay flat and try to recover again. That ability of laying flat triggers something very different than if you're trying to stand up and recover. So that's a way that they found people to be able to stay stronger and leaner without going in every single day doing some kind of long cardio. So if you can do sprint work twice a week, that's amazing. And then if on a daily basis, you can do 20 minutes of something, whether it be slow walking or you know power walking, nothing too aggressive, that actually helps, um, helps people stay leaner without constantly stressing and taxing the body. And then obviously, if you enjoy lifting weights, if you enjoy swimming, if you enjoy cycling, those are things that you wanna integrate a few times a week. But I think to go in every day and spend one or two hours in the gym and the people that have done this for years and are really frustrated and feel um, at a loss why their body isn't changing, you're overdoing and you're not giving your body the repair. You're not probably creating the energy you need to create and supporting the anti-aging benefits with healthy mitochondria. So I encourage you to to revamp, revise, and revisit your daily protocols, maybe your weekly protocols for workouts. Um, really take a look at your diet. If a lot of your fats are coming from things like bacon and cheese and cream cheese and milk products, you want to pull that stuff back and you want to gravitate more towards MCT oils, wild-caught salmon, um, some raw nuts, um, other types of fish, sardines, and anchovies. I know they're a tough one to get down um, for some people. I don't enjoy them, so I take them in other forms. But, um, you know, you want avocado and did I say coconut oil? Because you want that in there too. So there's all these other beautiful fats that you can start enhancing and use to your benefit. And you want to get all the junky stuff out. And the more that you support your mitochondria, the more it communicates with your brain and the less all that artificial stuff looks like food to you. You know, you can walk by a pastry and go, huh, that's not actually food that would do anything for me. And then you utilize less and less willpower because willpower is energy, energy created by mitochondria. The more healthy functioning mitochondria you have, the more willpower you have to stay away from junk and the more willpower you have to be active and enjoy life and seek out your goals and, and just accomplish things. So we wanna talk about not just trying to fit in the genes that we want and getting frustrated with our body, but we wanna be smart. We wanna be you know, defeating the aging process. We wanna reverse all of that. And we can actually be biologically younger than our chronological age if we treat ourselves well and we understand the science and that's sort of my commitment in all my programs is understanding the science and as it evolves, constantly be learning. So what I know now is probably very different than what I'll know and implement next year. And that's exciting. This is a beautiful time to be alive because there's so much research and emphasis on wellness and anti-aging and preventative care that it is amazing. So help your mitochondria. That is the word for today.